Hey guys, welcome back to Idaho Fabricator. I'm Steven and uh, I've been getting a lot of questions in the comments about boxing in the frame on my truck and uh, removing rivets and filling holes. And so today I thought I'd do a short video and just discuss some of that with you, show you some of the things that I do and uh, and I hope it helps you out on your project. So I'm gonna, so for today, we're gonna pretend like this is a, this is your frame, okay? And um, when you're boxing the frame in, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I'll show you the way I do it. First of all, I'll bevel the edge. I'll bevel both edges, but I'll start off by beveling one, okay? And then I'll take a piece of just any scrap steel and clamp it to the bottom of the frame, the whole area where I'm going to box it in. Then I'm gonna take my boxing plate, and it's just gonna rest on that so that the bottom I know is flush where I want it to be. And then I'm just gonna take a Sharpie or whatever and mark the top, the little bit of overhang. This is a little too much, but the little bit of overhang, and I'll either use a bandsaw or a grinder or whatever you've got to get this close. Then when you get it close, you'll bell the edge, and that way, when you put your weld bead in here, you get good penetration, makes for you know a nice clean installation. And uh, once you grind this smooth, you'll never see the weld. And then you can go ahead and radius this corner a little bit and it'll look like it's a one piece tube. Now some people will box their frame in with this inside the frame. Okay, I've seen guys do it where they actually leave a little step here. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, mostly, I think, because there's a ton of work to try and fit this in between the frame. Because the frame, like on my truck, it was, you know, kind of wonky here and there. And it would have taken a ton of time to hand fit those boxing plates in that frame. It was way easier to put it on the outside scribe it, grind it, clamp it with a clamp, and then go ahead and tack it, okay? Now when you're welding these on there, it's really important, I mean, it's you resist the temptation to just start laying a bead, you know, okay? Put a little bead on one side, you know, then go to the other side, put a little bead, then go to the back, put a bead underneath, and move around so that you don't put a lot of heat into the frame rails because you don't want any, you don't want any whisk, twisting or warping. Okay, so but if you spread your heat around and move it around, give it time to cool in between, you'll get much better results. Okay. Now I had some questions about filling holes in the frame. Okay, so let's say this you had this hole in your frame. So what I do is I take this round stock, I just have it all different diameters, and this is almost half inch, and I just, before I cut it off, I take it over to the grinder and I spin it, and I think, you, hopefully you can see that, I put a little bevel on it, okay? And then I'll take a magnet, stick it to the edge, pop it in the hole like that, and I'll go ahead and tack it, and then I'll move the magnet and I'll tack the other side. And then I'll go ahead and weld it around and then grind it smooth and the hole's gone. And then I'll go onto the inside and I'll go ahead and, and weld that as well. Okay, then it's super solid. You don't have to spend a lot of cleanup time in here because no one's gonna see it. <laughs> it's covered up. And uh, so that's how I, I'll, most times I plug holes. And you can get this rod in all different sizes. This is three quarter inch and uh, plug uh, lots of holes. And if you have a big ginormous hole, this is the center section from a hole saw, okay? And same idea, you fit this into the hole and then tack it, use magnets to hold it in place and then grind her down. And then this one here, you can go ahead and fill in and that big hole is totally gone. But using this rod is way easier than trying to 
trace a little circle on here and grinding it and that's nah, just too much work guys this is the shortcut this works awesome <laughs> and i filled a lot of holes on that frame using, using this technique so it works good now if you got little small holes like 3 16 and a quarter inch which i had a bunch of those you can use a, a copper backing plate and this is just a, a homemade tool i guess you could buy these now but um I made this a long time ago. I put it on a stick because this thing gets smoking hot when you're when you're using it as a backing plate. So you would put this behind the hole like that, hold it, and go ahead and work your torch around, making a little rosette, have it a little proud of the hole. Then you can go ahead and sand it smooth. Now your MIG wire won't stick to this. It kind of a little bit, but it won't weld to this. And that's because copper dissipates the heat so quickly that it, it can never get hot enough to weld to it. So this is pretty good. And where I get this copper is, I go to Home Depot or Lowe's and I buy those little, um, those little copper you know, nipples that hold the copper pipe together. And I just cut one side and then just hammer it out and flatten it out and then I get a nice little piece of copper like this. And um, this one's a little bigger one, so I can clamp it with a clamp and fill a couple of holes, a couple of small holes all at once. And it works really good. So that's a good source for copper. It's inexpensive and it's easy to get to. Let's see, what else? Oh, now let's say I had some questions about um, putting threaded inserts on the frame. And on my frame, I had not a number of threaded inserts that I put. And so here's what I do. So here's the nut. And then what you wanna do is you wanna get some of these guys here. It's an Allen bolt that's countersunk, okay? And what, what you do is you would put your nut. Now normally, if you just put the nut on there and maybe put a bolt through it and try and hold it, it's really hard to keep this nut centered in the hole. All right, and most of the time it ends up being over to one side. Then when you go to thread a bolt in, it's rubbing on the side of the hole and, and it's just not, it's not centered. So here's the trick for you. You get some of these and you thread this in and this taper here centers the nut in the hole. It works sweet. Then you just tack your nut couple spots go ahead and remove your your bolt and go ahead and finish weld it and it will be dead center in the middle of the hole so this works really cool it's a good trick for you and as you can see I have an assortment here of uh, all different threads uh, 5 16 24 quarter 20 you know half inch all different applications um, for when I want to put a threaded insert in the frame. So this is a good te technique. Now, I had one question about um, drilling out rivets in the frame. Okay, so here's what I do. So we'll pretend like this is a rivet and it's sticking proud, right? So what I do is I grind this down as close as I can get it. I don't really want to uh, scallop you know, the frame that much. I just want to get it really close. So it's just starting to catch the edges, okay? Then I just take my handy dandy Harbor Freight impact gun, hold it in the center and just buzz it and it, the rivet just falls right out of there. I had a few rivets that were really stubborn. They didn't want to come out. So what I did is I drilled a hole in the middle, like 3 16 hole and um, and that sit, tends to kind of relieve some of the pressure on it and then put the gun on there and buzzed it right out of there. So um, these things work great. It's just a, a blunt end um, uh, punch and it works really good for removing those. So that is that. Now let me show you on the frame. There was another question about um, um, some more threaded inserts on the frame. So let me show you some of the things that before I box the frame in, 
I put threaded inserts here, and this is the mount that holds the back of the cab, okay? So before I boxed it in, I used those countersunk bolts and I centered, centered nuts in there and welded them on. So I put threaded inserts there, and on this four link bracket, these, these holes, when you get this particular kit that I got from TCI, it fit the factory holes that were already here when you knock the rivets out. And so what I did was I put nuts inside on the frame, welded them on. There's three down here, and then there's three nuts up here underneath. So I welded those on. And then that way I could go ahead and box the frame in and not have to worry about getting access to a wrench in back there and tightening it up. And then in the back here, this is for the back bumper mount. Same thing again. I just welded some nuts back behind there, centered them in the hole with those uh, countersunk bolts. And that way I could box this all in and still have access or still be able to tighten it up. And I've got one hole here Okay, and this hole is just big enough for a socket to go up and tighten this back bed mount bolt. So the bolt goes down through and I just use a deep socket to come up inside here and I can tighten the nut. And that way I don't have a, you know, a bolt sticking out with a nut on the outside of the frame. I thought this is a lot cleaner of an application. So as best you can, you try and think about all of those things that um, you know, you're gonna need to have bolts for. You're gonna need to mount to your frame. And in the event that you kinda know kind of where you're gonna put stuff, like here, I've got this fuel filter, and I'm not sure if this is gonna be the spot or not, but what I did was, before I um, welded the backing plate on, I welded an extra piece of plate to this backing plate. So I made it like three eighths of an inch thick, okay? That way, if I need to add something in here, I can drill a hole through it and, and tap it and thread it and bolt something right to the frame. I hope that, I uh, hope I explained that right. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I also, under here, let me show you one other thing. Turn on my light. This bolt right here, guys, this is a, I just welded a, a bung on here. And the purpose of this, here's my battery box right here. The battery cables that come up over the top. This will be for a ground. So I'll be able to ground the engine and the battery right to the frame. And uh, so that's another thing to think about. Uh, where you're going to ground things. So you'll need to account for that when you do your backing plates. And, um, oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. Let me show you over the bench. Okay. When you're getting your steel for your stuff, this piece of steel here is, is hot rolled steel, okay? And it has this dark gray mill scale on it. This stuff is super hard. In fact, the mill scale is harder than the base metal. Okay, you'll want to grind this off. But here's the deal. Rather than go to all that work of grinding this off, when you go to the steel place, tell them you want pickled and oiled. Okay, what they do is they, in the process, this is hot rolled sheet steel. When, they're, when you get pickled and oiled, what they do is, as soon as this comes out, they immerse it in an acid solution. And the acid removes all of the impurities. It removes the mill scale, all of that dirt. And you end up with a piece of steel that's really nice. No mill scale, okay? So when you're getting your steel for your brackets, or actually not for your brackets, for your boxing plates, when you're getting your steel for your boxing plates, here's what I did. I measured my frame from one end to the other, okay, and I think it was like seven and something inches at the back and it was narrower at the front, right? 
So I went to the steel place and I said, hey, I need a piece of pickled and oiled 316 steel. I need you to shear me off a piece that's seven and a half inches wide by eight feet long. Okay, so they did that. I brought those pieces home and just like I said, I clamped some pieces on the bottom and then took my steel and actually let's do it this way and took my steel and rested it on there. Okay, here's my piece. Might as well do it the right way, huh? Okay, so I had a piece on the bottom and then my piece rested on the top and then I just went along and marked it with a Sharpie, trimmed off the excess, used a grinder, cut off wheel, hacksaw, whatever. Then I went ahead and welded it up and I ended up with what you see there, just a, a frame that looks like it came off the assembly line boxed in. So I think those were the major questions. This has been a fun project, guys. I, uh, I really enjoy sharing it with you, and uh, we got a lot more stuff to cover coming up in the future. And uh, eventually, it's going to be smoky burnout time. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> As always, guys, be safe in the shop, all right? If it looks sketchy or feels sketchy, probably is. So rethink it. Um, get a safety guard, get whatever you need to stay safe out there, all right? And I will see you next time at Idaho Fabricator.